So it's a great honor to, uh, to, uh, for me to give this, uh, this uh, Dale uh, T. Mortensen's uh, lecture. Dale has been very important for, uh, for me and uh, my career. I uh, met Dale in the mid-90s when I started to work uh, on wedge uh, distributions and, uh, and wedge dynamics, coming from 10 years of painful uh, research on uh, demand systems and consumption. I thought that going to labor uh, was simpler because you, you, you would go from many markets of differentiated products to just one market of differentiated products. Is, is it still working? So, so I started to work on, uh, uh, on this in the, in, in, in around 95, and, and I met Dale. Dale invited me to, uh, to, to the workshop that he organized in, uh, in, in Denmark uh, at the time, which was a great workshop uh, where uh, fantastic people uh, participated. Uh, Burdett, uh, Wright, uh, Zviechtin, and, uh, and, and, and many others. And I learned a lot uh, in those uh, conferences. So I owe Dale a lot. I learned a lot from him, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very moving for me to, to, to give this talk uh, uh, today. And uh, I just want to express Dale all my gratitude. So the second thing I uh, uh, wanted to, uh, to say relates to uh, uh, what Guido said uh, recently. I'm not turning a macroeconomist. I was at the Banque de France at, uh, early uh, this week, and it was all about search and monetary economics. I couldn't understand a word of what, what they were talking about. So definitely, this is not uh, where I belong to. Uh, I am a microeconometrician, and I uh, don't intend to to do anything else. I'm interested in wage distributions, wage, uh, individual wage uh, dynamics, and uh, employment uh, uh, mobility. And, but exactly what uh, Guido said is, uh, is true. The more sophisticated our models become, the, more, uh, the longer the panel data the, uh, you, you need to, uh, to, to identify them. And, uh, and clearly, I mean, if you estimate, uh, uh, let's say, a neighborhood uh, Kramer Margolis model on, uh, on, on match employee employee data, you will need 20 years of data. You can control for a business cycle by adding uh, dummy variables or uh, any other uh, sort of uh, 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 features. If you want to estimate structural models that is build uh, more uh, economically, uh, I mean, try to, to, to build a theory of uh, wage uh, determination and treat the models seriously and estimate those models, then, and if you need 20 years of data, I mean, at some point you will need to, to worry about the uh, interaction between uh, aggregate shocks, the, the environment, and uh, the amount of heterogeneity that you want to put in a model in order to fit the, 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 the data. And that's why uh, recently I became uh, uh, interested in, uh, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, uh, in this project. And so the paper I'm going to present today will have lots of heterogeneity and uh, uh, aggregate shocks uh, uh, at the same time. The other thing I wanted to, to say, and, and I'm going to move to, to, to the paper, is about estimation. Is there a difference in the way we estimate, uh, let's say, the, the model today from, uh, uh, let's say, which, which is more like a, a macro paper, and the way uh, uh, we, we, we estimate models uh, on uh, match employee employee data. Not really, because the models we estimate are, have become so complicated that the only method that is available to us to estimate them is the simulated method of moments. And so what you, want, what you do, you calculate moments from the data, and you try to match those um, moments. So whether the moments have been calculated by the BLS people or uh, by yourself from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from, from the raw data. It doesn't make a big difference in, in the end. So, so what I'm doing here is not essentially different than, than, than what I've been doing until, uh, until now. Uh, okay, so that, the, 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 that was the, the, the initial remarks that uh, I wanted to make before turning to, uh, to, uh, uh, to the paper which is jo joint work with, uh, with Jeremy Lewis. Uh, and it's, uh, it's about the micro, micro dynamics of sorting between workers and firms. So 
In this paper, we, uh, we want to ask two uh, questions. Uh, the first one is, uh, what is the role of uh, worker and firm uh, heterogeneity in explaining the microdynamics of uh, unemployment? And the second question is, how does business cycle affect sorting? That is, the joint distribution of worker and uh, firm types uh, uh, over time. So, in order to do that, uh, we're going to develop a sequential auction model, uh, which is the, the, the model we developed in, uh, in, uh, in, in the paper that uh, Guido referred to a moment ago. I should say that the sequ sequential auction model is a great uh, uh, name for, for, for this model. I'm not uh, the, uh, and the one who proposed uh, it's Dale Mortensen. So I, I didn't in we didn't invent this, uh, this name. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's Dale. So it's not going to be the burden Mortensen model. It's not going to be the, the Mortensen beside this model. This is the, the, the sequential auction uh, model, and I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's much better this way. Uh, with, uh, so it's a, it's a sequential auction model with heterogeneous workers and tasks and aggregate productivity shocks, and then we, we are going to, to estimate the model from uh, uh, U.S. aggregate labor market data spanning the period 1951 uh, 2012 because at the time this is the latest uh, date that we uh, we had so a word uh, before before uh, moving on about sequen the sequential auction model so what is the main idea i mean the, the the way, the way we thought about uh, 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 the sequential auctions was Okay, we keep, we start from the, the, the Mortensen Pisides framework, we keep frictions as a, a uh, uh, the, uh, some source of, uh, 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 we keep search frictions as a source of uh, uh, frictions in the, in the economy, but we, we get rid of Nash bargaining. We keep the, 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 the main idea in competitive models. I mean, the reason why wage is equal to marginal productivity in, in, in the valorizing economy. That's because if you're not, you can, you can find another, another job and better competition is going, is going to, uh, and one way of thinking of uh, a valorizing economy is through better competition, you, 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 you move your wage up to uh, a marginal productivity. So what is the effect of frictions? The effect of frictions is, uh, uh, such frictions is, uh, the, the way we think of it is, is in this way. Workers, when they are unemployed, they have zero bargaining power. And so when they leave uh, unemployment, they leave at, uh, at, at the, the minimum wage that they, they are willing to, uh, to, to work for. That this is the reservation wage. But it's not so bad for them. They can search on the job. And when they find uh, 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 would be another uh, employer willing to hire them, then they, that triggers better competition. And they, and, 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 and they get uh, a wage uh, rise. So this, this mechanism allows to span all the models between the monopsony uh, model to uh, the pure Varasian uh, competitive model. But for, for this particular uh, uh, work, it happens that uh, it, it, this wage setting mechanism is very useful because uh, you'll see whether employed or unemployed workers will always be paid the best remain option I use this. Uh, uh, that is the second best option. And uh, the second best uh, option is going to allow to get, to get, to, to allow us to, to simplify the Bellman, the Bellman equation uh, a lot. And this is the, 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 the technical uh, uh, reason why we have been able to introduce a lot of worker heterogeneity and a lot of uh, firm heterogeneity. So, so this, uh, the, 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 so abandoning, moving away from, uh, from Nash bargaining is going to give us a, uh, uh, a lot of simplifici uh, simplification in, uh, in, 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 in laying Leon, Leon off uh, or solving the, the equilibrium. The other thing is that uh, because of poaching, uh, workers are going to move inside, wa workers' wages are going to move inside the bargaining, uh, the bargaining set, so exposed workers are going to be paid uh, somewhere inside the bargaining set. So exposed, the, 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 the wage allocation is not going to be very different from what you get from, uh, from Nash bargaining. 
So this paper indeed uh, builds on uh, several work, uh, 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 several previous work. So the the the, the paper by with Fabien Postelvine that uh, we already uh, talked about. So the uh, uh, I, I did a first uh, uh, attempt at uh, uh, pushing in this in the direction of of today's paper in a previous work of mine uh, 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 that I published uh, a few years ago in which I had only worker heterogeneity and aggregate shocks there there was no sortie of course there was no firm heterogeneity Fermi, we started to think about uh, sorting and uh, 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 production complementarities in a paper uh, with Jeremy Lees and Costas Megir that recently got published in, uh, in, 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 in red in the special issue uh, edited by Guido uh, in honor of uh, uh, Dale Mortensen. Sorry, it's really uh, good that, uh, okay. Uh, so this current paper, We'll have uh, uh, exogenous worker heterogeneity, endogenous firm uh, heterogeneity. It will have sorting of workers and firms, and we'd have aggregate shocks, and sorting is going to move uh, 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 along the, the business cycle. The reason why we are able to do that is that, again, I mean, because of the simplification in the Bellman equations, I mean, we, we, you see that uh, uh, the equilibrium model that we get is a has a recursive structure, which allows us to, uh, to, to, to solve uh, the equilibrium exactly, and not uh, uh, an approximation. So there is a huge related uh, uh, literature. We are not the, the only ones doing uh, uh, heterogeneity and aggregate shocks. There are some competitors in the room. Uh, I don't know how we're going to, 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 to share the cake in the, in the end. I hope cooperatively uh, instead of, uh, uh, I hope we're going to avoid competition. So of course there is the directed search uh, with wage posting uh, approach by uh, Guido and, uh, and Shu Yong and uh, uh, others. Then there is a random search and, uh, and wage posting that uh, uh, Giuseppe and Fabien uh, recently uh, developed. Dale uh, and, and Melville Coles have uh, uh, a follow-up work, work uh, on this. Then this, uh, they, this, this work is related to uh, uh, all the work on, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the unemployment volatility puzzle. Uh, you see that uh, uh, introducing heterogeneity in the economy allows to, to, uh, to, uh, to get the right amplification mechanism. And then there is work about sorting. A lot of uh, many papers, very very important papers that uh, I'm not going to uh, to, to to refer uh, uh, to uh, extensively. So, so but I must say that I mean there are very few pa little work with two-sided heterogeneity and aggregate shocks, and uh, uh, I uh, I am very uh, and you see that's what I'm going to talk about today. Okay, so uh, now uh, the model. So time is discrete in index by T. There will be a continuum of uh, workers indexed by uh, type X, which is uh, between uh, 0 and 1, with an exogenous distribution L of X. Uh, there is also a continuum of potential jobs indexed by Y, also between 0 and 1. And the aggregate state of the economy is Z, X, Y, and Z. Uh, at the end of period T minus 1, the distribution of uh, matches is, uh, uh, that is passed on to uh, uh, period T as a state variable is uh, denoted as HT uh, of X and Y. Uh, and this is prior to the realization of, Z, uh, of the aggregated shock for the period, prior to the realization of ZT. And UT of X is the distribution of worker types in the population of unemployed uh, uh, workers. Knowing HT is enough because you have, uh, you have this uh, uh, accounting equation that gives you U uh, given H. Timing. So at the beginning of period T, the, the aggregate shock is realized uh, as a draw from a Markov transition probability pi of Z, uh, Z prime. So you move from Z you go from Z to Z prime with probability pi Z, Z prime. And then the tim timing is as follows. First, separations occur. Then workers search for a job and firms post vacancies. And then meetings occur. 
All right, so let me go through all these stages uh, one at a time. So first, following the realization of ZT, job separations occur. Here we are going to assume that there are two reasons for a uh, job separation. So let me denote for the moment very loosely uh, as P sub T XY, the present value of a match XY, given the aggregate state at time T. So, so it includes ZT, but it includes also all the, the distributions that, uh, uh, of types that uh, I uh, mentioned uh, earlier. And let me de denote as BT of X, the value of unemployment. Okay, so there is the value of a match and there is the value of unemployment. So take a match XY. You see ZT, you calculate the value of the match, PT of uh, XY. If the value of the match is less than the value of unemployment, of course, there is no point in continuing and the match is destroyed. We call that endogenous job destruction. Otherwise, if the, the match is still uh, valuable, then we assume that there is an extra possibility of job destruction with probability delta uh, that is uh, exogenous uh, job destruction. Why do we have something like that? It's very really easy to understand uh, from the beginning. When you look at the dynamics of unemployment over time, you see that the unemployment goes never below, say, 4%. So, so you need something that's going to give you at least 4% of unemployment in every period. So that's this delta. And the rest is going to be driven by uh, uh, the interaction between types and the macro environment. So right after job separations, we can calculate the new distribution of types in the economy. And we uh, call uh, HT plus of XY all those matches of type XY which have not been destroyed. So you need PT to be greater than, than BT and you need not to be uh, destroyed for exogenous reasons. So 1 minus delta times the indicator function that PT is greater than, than, than BT. And then you can calculate the, 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 the new stock of unemployed of type X there are all those uh, who were already employed at the unemployed at the beginning of the period, plus all those who have been uh, uh, destro uh, uh, destroyed due to the new uh, aggregate shock and due to exogenous uh, job destruction. So, starting from HT, you calculate HT plus. Now, following the realization of the T and job separations, workers search for a job. So we assume that workers search both when unemployed and when they are employed. So we, I define here the, the aggregate search effort uh, of all searching workers in the economy. That's the sum of all uh, unemployed workers plus a fraction of uh, 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 matched uh, employees. S is the search effort of uh, uh, employed workers relative to unemployed workers. You can see it as a fraction of, uh, of them or with a probability S uh, uh, less than one you, you search. In, at the same time, following the realization of the T and job separations, firms post vacancies. So such a there, is, there are searching wor workers on one hand, and, and there are uh, firms posting vacancies on the, other, on the other hand. Here we assume that there is a cost, a convex function uh, uh, of uh, the number of vacancies posted. And uh, each firm of type Y, or all firms of uh, type Y, are going to post uh, uh, VT of Y vacancies so as to equate the marginal cost of a vacancy to the marginal uh, return of a vacancy. What is the marginal return? That's QT, the probability of uh, uh, meeting a, a worker, I will explain in a minute uh, what it is exactly, times the marginal value of uh, a field uh, vacancy, which will be also derived uh, later. And uh, from this equation, by aggregation, you can calculate the total number of vacancies in the economy. Then workers and firms uh, meet. 
So for that, I assume a, a, a meeting technology, M over T and VT, giving the total number of meetings in the, in, in the period. And from this matching meeting function, I can derive the probability for an unemployed workers to be contact to contact a vacancy, which is MT over LT. The probability for unemployed workers to uh, find a job, which is S times lambda T, and the probability per unit of, rec uh, of recruiting, uh, per unit of vacancy, per vacancy VT uh, Y, the probability uh, for a firm to, or for a vacancy to uh, 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 meet a searching worker. So that's QT, which is MT over VT. So standard in, uh, in search matching theory. Now values. So let's start with the value of unemployment. So we assume uh, uh, infi uh, infi infinite horizon. Uh, what is the present value of unemployment? That's going to be the expected discounted sum of future earnings, conditional on being employed, unemployed, unemployed, conditional on being unemployed in period T, and given ZT, and given all the, uh, the distributions uh, HT, uh, uh, given the distribution uh, uh, HT plus. So, in period T, unemployed workers receive some uh, payoff, uh, instantaneous payoff, that, uh, that we assume is a function of their type and the aggregate state uh, of the economy, ZT. And what's happening in period T plus one? We're going to write about many equations. So what's happening in period T plus one? Unemployed workers can meet a, a, a vacancy or not. If they don't, they continue with the value of unemployment, BT plus one X. If they meet a vacancy, because we assume that they have zero bargaining power, whether they find a job or they don't, they continue with the value of unemployment, BT plus one of X. So that means that uh, it's very easy to work out the, the Bayman equation in this case. BT is B of X ZT plus one over one plus R times the expectation given information at time T. One minus lambda T plus one, that's if they find a job, but if they find a job, they're going to be paid the value of unemployment. If they don't, uh, if they don't find a job, they are paid the value of unemployment. If they find a job, this job is of type Y, drawn from distribution VT plus one Y over VT plus one, but you don't care because they don't have, they have zero bargaining power, so they receive BT plus one X. So it's the same here and there, and so lambda T plus one doesn't matter. And that's the only, the only parameter through which you can have a dependence to, to, uh, to uh, distributions. So there is no dependence to distribution, it's just BT BXZT plus one over one plus R expected BT plus one X. So that means that there is a solution, a very simple solution, which is BTX is a function of X and ZT, where the B of X and Z solves this linear equation. And it's contracting, so numerically, just have to discretize uh, uh, as you want, and it's going to convert, uh, simply iterating the, uh, the standard algorithm, uh, the forward algorithm will give you uh, 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 the, 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 the function. So th we can calculate this function B of, X, B, B of XZ ex ante. The value of a match. So how do you calculate the value of a match XY at time T? So PT of XY. What is it? That's the expected discounted sum of worker and employer's future earnings. So together or separately? So how do you calculate it? In period T, we assume that a match XY in environment ZT earns P of XY ZT. What happens in period T plus one? Bayman equation again. The, emplo the employee may be contacted by an outside, uh, by, by, by some uh, alternative uh, uh, employer or not. The probability of being contacted by a firm of type Y prime, that's S times lambda T plus one, the probability of a meeting, if you are employed, times what is the probability of doing a, a, a firm of type Y prime. So that's 
the number of vacancies of type Y prime divided by the total number of vacancies. Now, remember, we assume that firms, and work, that firms are going to engage in Bertrand competition for the worker. What does that mean? That means that uh, if Y prime generates a, a match value that is higher than the value generated by match XY, the worker is going to move to Y prime, but it's Bertrand competition. So it's like an auction. How much does Y prime have to give the worker? The maximum value that Y is able to pay, which is the, the firm's reservation value, which is P of T plus one XY. So that's P T plus one XY. So the worker lives, but lives with, this, with, 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 a, with a wage contract that is this, this particular value, P T plus one XY. Or Y prime doesn't beat firm uh, Y, and the worker stays at Y, and so the match continues in period T plus one and generates the value of the match at time T plus one. Pt plus 1, x of y. So it's exactly like uh, for the uh, unemployment value, whether you, the worker is contacted by a firm or not, it gets the best remain value, Pt plus 1, x, y. So that means that when you ca calculate the value of the match, Pt of x, y, you have to, add, to start with the current the flow value uh, of the match, P of X, Y, Z, T, plus the continuation value. The continuation value is, with some probability, you'll be laid off. And in that case, the value, the continuation value is BT plus 1 of X. And if you're not laid off, with probability 1 minus delta indicator that PT plus 1 X, Y is greater than the value of unemployment, BT plus 1 X, then you continue with the value PT plus 1 X, Y. Nowhere you see lambda t plus 1. So again, the only reason that would make lambda, the distribution be part of the state space vanishes because there is no dependence to uh, uh, the, uh, the meeting rates in period t plus 1. And so if you define now the surplus of the match as bt minus bt, pt minus bt, then you can get rid of of this BT plus one here, and show that the surplus, given the state at time t of x1, at least there is one solution, that is a simple function of x, y, z, t, that solves this quasi-linear equation. It's not linear just because of uh, this plus here, which is our notation for the max of x uh, and zero. But it, it is still contracting, and we can still solve it. Uh, finger in the nose by iterating the uh, the forward uh, uh, <laughs> equation. <laughs> That's a French expression, yes. <laughs> uh, so, so again, you can so you can calculate the the present the, the surplus ex ante without solving for uh, uh, the equilibrium. Last thing, you can calculate the, the expected uh, the, the value of a field vacancy. I will pass on this uh, for the sake of uh, your sanity at the end of uh, uh, this long day. So, so uh, but I mean, the bottom line is that you calculate it given the, the initial period uh, uh, distributions and given the surplus uh, that you have just calculated. So, and finally, you can derive the law of motion for, for distributions, and they also only depend on, 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 on the, the aggregate surplus and the, the number of vacancies and the distributions that, that, that you got from, from the, the previous uh, uh, period. So, so at the end of the day, what we, it's very easy to, to, to compute uh, the stochastic search uh, equilibrium of, uh, of this uh, uh, model. First, you solve for the fixed point of uh, S of X, Y, and Z. It's a function of three, three variables. It's easy to do, enough. Uh, uh, you can even uh, afford uh, discretizing X, Y, and Z uh, 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 quite uh, a bit. Then, once you have done that, the model is recursive. So given HT, you calculate HT plus 1, HT plus 2, uh, VT, VT plus 1, VT, etc. 
And so it's very easy to, uh, to, uh, to, to solve. So it's a model with a lot of worker heterogeneity, a lot of firm heterogeneity, aggregate uh, productivity shocks, and uh, 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 an exactly calculated stochastic uh, general equilibrium. General. So what is the, the aggregate productivity shock? It can be something that you get from the goods market and that we don't model. So uh, one possible extension would be to try and plunge this model into a, a, a general equilibrium model, which would tell you what is that T, whether it's a demand shock or whether it's a supply shock. I mean, at, at this stage, we are, we, are, we are totally agnostic. Okay, now, in the last... Uh, a few minutes that uh, I have, I'm going to turn to the, to the estimation and the data. So before, but for estimation, uh, we need a, a, a specification. So we, uh, we, uh, we, we adopt a very standard uh, uh, parametric specification, a corbe Douglas specification for, for the meeting function. So we, we don't even bother uh, uh, estimating the elasticity. Uh, we, we assume that it is, it is 0.1, 0.5. Uh, the only parameter that has to be estimated is the matching, meeting efficiency, alpha. Then uh, we need a, 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 a specification for the, for the, the, uh, the cost of uh, uh, V vacancies. So it's a simple power function with two parameters, C0 and C, C1. For P, the match output, we make a... Uh, 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 Something that we believe is, is uh, relatively flexible. For, so first, we assume that it is proportional to, to uh, the aggregate shock. And then it's a simple quadratic approximation of uh, uh, a general function of x and y. So it's a quadratic in x and y. And you see that, importantly, you have some uh, uh, complementarities there uh, that, uh, that are going to be quite important. Uh, for home production, we tie our hand by assuming that uh, home production is a fixed fraction of uh, uh, aggregate output, and we take the, the universal constant, 0.7 of, uh, of P. Uh, we're going to you can choose whatever you want if, uh, in fact, it's going to work. But it's not 0.95. <laughs> For the worker type distribution, we assume a simple beta distribution. It's nice a beta. It, has just, it only has two parameters, and the density can be like this, can be like that, or can be la like this again. So it's extremely flexible uh, and uh, uh, very sparse in, in parameters. And then for aggregate shocks, we use a simple AR1 uh, process with two parameters, the auto parameter rho and uh, the, the volatility uh, sigma. So we write it in this way so that sigma is the, the, the variance, the volatility of uh, the aggregate shock. How do we estimate uh, the model? We first, uh, nothing, uh, nothing uh, extremely original here. I mean, we HP filter the log transform data. We calculate moments, means, volatilities, correlations, and we use the method of uh, uh, simulated moments to estimate the parameters. For identification, the idea that we have is that in order to estimate alpha as the relative search intensity, alpha is the meeting efficiency, uh, as the relative search intensity of employees, uh, delta is exogenous uh, uh, job destruction, you, you're going to need uh, data on transition, uh, transitions between employment and unemployment, and job-to-job -job transitions. So that's, in order to estimate sigma and rho, you just need data uh, on aggregate output. We, we use GDP instead of uh, GDP per head uh, productivity uh, for some reason that, uh, for some reason, it happened to be uh, easier to do, to, uh, to do it this way. Vacancy cost, uh, so the parameters C0 and C1, they are identified from vacancies. Beta, uh, worker heterogeneity, that, that is, so that's, that's important. I mean, in order to identify worker heterogeneity, we're going to use the, 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 the series of unemployment by duration. So 
the number of unemployed at a given point in time, the number of unemployed with more than five, years, five weeks of unemployment, the number of unemployed with more than 15 weeks of unemployment, and the number of unemployed with more than 27 weeks of unemployment. That's duration dependence that is going to, to, to identify worker heterogeneity. And then for, for the match uh, value-added function, we, uh, the idea is to use cross-sectional data on firm value-added, calculate the dispersion of firm value added in every period and look and, and create uh, a time series of this and correlate it with uh, aggregate output, etc. We don't use uh, our own uh, series. We take one that, uh, that has been constructed by uh, Nick Bloom and, and co-authors uh, recently. So, moments. We use the method of moments. So here tells you about the fit between uh, uh, so it tells you two things. So first, I mean, look at the data. So that's the volatility of uh, GDP, log GDP. It's 0.03. Look at the volatility of uh, unemployment. It's 0.20. So an order of magnitude bigger. So that's why you, you need the model to, gen to, to generate a uh, uh, an amplification mechanism in order to amplify this, uh, this uh, very, very the s s I mean, the small volatility of uh, of uh, uh, aggregate shocks to uh, the level of uh, uh, unemployment. But now look at uh, the volatility of unemployment, uh, uh, unemployment more than five weeks. It's much bigger. The, the, the volatility of, uh, of long-term unemployment is even bigger. Okay? What the model does, a pretty good job as, uh, at matching those, uh, those, uh, those moments, the, the volatilities. And but also, when you look at uh, transitions from unemployment to employment, employment to unemployment, job to job transitions, the volatility is, is well matched. Tightness, it's okay. The cross sectional variance or uh, dispersion of uh, 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 firm value added and the volatility of this across uh, time, it's also well uh, matched. The only thing that uh, that's not as good as uh, what uh, we would want is the volatility of uh, vacancies, which is we, we predict much lower than what we see in the data. But we all know that uh, vacancies are very hard to measure, so uh, uh, I can live uh, without. For we, we also try to match correlations uh, with one shock that we, we are going to generate uh, a lot more correlations between aggregate output uh, between the series than you, you see in the data, but there is a fair amount of correlation. You see in the data, uh, uh, a correlation between unemployment and GDP minus 0.86, uh, vacancy GDP 0.72, uh, etc. Uh, okay, so all the, all the, the data uh, uh, correlations are very high and the, mo the, the model predicts of the, the right sign but, and, and, and values which are much higher. For the only correlation that is very low is the correlation between the cross-sectional dispersion of uh, firm value added and GDP, and the model gets it right too. Uh, now, we do another exercise, which is w to show that, because I mean moments, we, you could have the right volatility, but it's not clear that you have the right value. So what we do is we, we, we filter out productivity shocks so as to match exactly the, the observed GDP series. Okay, so in every period, you observe GDP. We ask ourselves, what is the value of ZT that we need to, to put in order for the current distributions of uh, uh, worker uh, types to generate output that is exactly equal to the observed GDP? So, and, and we pro proceed in this way, we can calculate a series of uh, a job uh, uh, of uh, uh, aggregate uh, shocks in order to match exactly the series of uh, GDP. Question: Is this series of ZT hat that we uh, generate does it satisfy the R1 process that we assumed in the first place? That's something that you have to check. Yes, it does. So the series of, Z, or, or, of GDP value of, of, uh, of ZT that you have to generate in order to match exactly the, the observed series of GDP is approximately an R1 process uh, with the right uh, volatility that we have uh, previously estimated. 
then, given that t, you can use the model to calculate the next period uh, distribution of types. And calculate aggregate unemployment, and calculate uh, aggregate unemployment by, by duration, etc. Here, we show the, the actual series of unemployment. Unemployment more than five weeks, unemployment more than 15 weeks, unemployment more than uh, 17 weeks. The green dotted line, that's the data. The blue, that's the, the, the one period ahead prediction. And you see that uh, why the volatility and the correlation is right. It's because, I mean, the, 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 the R square is, uh, is, is quite good indeed at all frequencies. So, so that seems to be working uh, well. You can do that for an employment to employment transitions, employment to unemployment transitions, and job to job transitions. Scale is a bit misleading, but I mean, you see that the, the dynamics is, ex is exactly well reproduced. The level is a bit off, but not, not so much. And for job to job transitions, calculated from the job, so we don't have them uh, for the whole period, it's also pretty good. The only thing that doesn't work as well is the dynamics of vacancy data. Uh, the help wanted vacancy that we have, we have glued with the, the jolts uh, uh, measure uh, uh, some, somewhere here. So we have the right, co the, the right uh, uh, dynamics, but not exactly the right volatility. We, we, we have a smaller half volatility with respect to, to the two. Parameter estimates. One thing that we do is we do simulated method of movements. That is, we estimate the parameters. And if you estimate the parameters, there is one thing that it is buying you. It's buying you standard errors. So why is it useful to have standard errors? So we, one thing we do, we use the new West estima estimator for the variance, of, of the, variance the moment variance. And then we, we, uh, we use the, the delta method to, to calculate the, 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 the standard errors of, of, of the estimates. So why is it useful to calculate some of errors? It's because it's telling you about identification, at least local identification. Think of a OLS estimate, the, the variance of the OLS estimator, that's the variance of the error term times x prime x minus 1. You have two components. The variance of the error term, that's the signal noise ratio. So in order to have a precise estimate, you, you need to have a good signal noise ratio. And then you have x prime x minus 1. You cannot have a good estimate if you have multicollinearity, if the model is not identified. So having good estimates I, frees you of uh, doing any more, uh, any, 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 any uh, uh, other uh, 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 calculation to, in order to show uh, identification. It proves here we, the, 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 the standard errors, which are very good, already prove by themselves that the model is at least locally identified. That means if you move away from those parameter estimates, you're going to, re to decrease the, 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 the GMM uh, uh, criterion. Doesn't mean that there is not somewhere uh, another set of values that would do as well. So for that, you need to try many different initial values and make sure that this is the one that is better. This is something that we did, uh, by the way. So we, have, we are pretty confident that, that uh, those estimates are indeed the ones that uh, minimize the, the sum of uh, uh, the, 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 the GMM criteria, maximize the fit. So now, uh, uh, what does that give us? So this is the form of the production function that we estimate, P of x, y, z. So here we show it, uh, uh, you know, it's z times a function of x, y. So it's just the part, uh, the quadratic part. That's quite interesting. What it says is that if you are a firm here, you want the, you, you, you want the, the best worker. Okay, I mean, uh, it increases along the, the worker type dimension. If you are a worker, it's different. If you are a low type worker, there will be an optimal value of, uh, of y. Okay, if you, if, you, if you move up, you see that at some point you reach one that is, that is, that is, that is tangent to uh, the ISO uh, clients. At some point, if you are a very able worker, you don't care anymore about uh, 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 the... Well, no, you, you, want, you want the best, uh, you want the best uh, one. 
So, but I mean, you, you see that you, you never, uh, in the data, nobody is here and nobody is there. So, because the distribution of worker types that we estimate is this one. So basically, there is no worker with a type above 0.5. Uh, so, and the distribution of vacancy types is here. There is no job type less than 0.1 and more than 0.5. So it's a bit, this, this function here is a bit misleading because we should restrict it to this segment here and this segment there. So basically, this box uh, here. But anyway, that's the idea. Uh, there is a lot of uh, 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 action along the worker uh, uh, type, uh, along the worker type uh, dimension, not so much along the firm type dimension. Firms all want the best workers. Low ability workers are picky. Then uh, uh, that's the distribution of worker types that we estimate, the, bel the, the beta distribution, ni nicely behaved. And this one here, that's the distribution of worker types among uh, unemployed workers. And what you see is that if you have a low X, you have a much higher probability of being unemployed than if you, have, if you are a high uh, ability uh, worker. So, so that's what, this one is endogenous. Huh? This distribution here, that's, the distribu that's V of Y. It is endogenous. And we showed, we, so there are two curves because one corresponds here to a, z a high Z, let's say the, the ninth decile that we observe in the data, and this one corresponds to a low, uh, low aggregate shock, the first decile. What you see is that you, you don't have a shift. It's not as if uh, 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 when Z is better, uh, firms of a higher Y enter the, the market. It's, it's more like a, they, 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 you have more jobs, that are po more vacancies that are posted, but, uh, but uh, f roughly with the same distribution. A bit more concentrated in the middle. This is B over P. So what this shows is that it's not a small surplus economy. Uh, B over P is not close to uh, 0.9. Uh, uh, so that's, this curve corresponds to, uh, to, a, to a, 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 a bust, this one to uh, so a recession, and this one to uh, a boom. And what's happening is that B over P becomes lower, or P increases with respect to B uh, in, 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 in booms vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, recession. So you have two modes. This one corresponds to workers coming from unemployment. So for those workers coming from unemployment, B over P is higher. But because of under job search, they can move progressively towards uh, 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 a match, which has a higher P. They keep the same B as before. So B over P uh, becomes uh, lower. And you see that you have more employed workers than unemployed workers. So, so this is... Uh, 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 there is more concentration in this in this region here than than there. This is the 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 the, the, the region of feasible matches calculated for different uh, uh, state of the economy. S this dotted line here that's uh, uh, the optimal matches. So Baker, that's where uh, if you could perfectly sort workers. And firms, uh, if you could have, uh, uh, you could be a, a, a planner uh, and uh, uh, remove all frictions in the economy. This is what uh, you would uh, you would do. You would associate this y to that x. But because of frictions, you have a lot of mismatch, and mismatch sorting changes with the business cycle. And what's going to happen is that in a boom. You can, be less, you can afford to be less picky. So the machine set is wider in a boom than in a recession. So that corresponds to boom. This frontier here corresponds to a, re a recession. Surprisingly enough, I don't know exactly why, here it moves more than, uh, than there. I don't know why. Uh, that's the distribution of matches, H, that we estimate at two uh, different points 
in the in the business cycle. So wha what you have to take, I mean, it's like uh, in, in, in one dimension, you would have something like this, like an exponential. So that's why you have, uh, you, you have this sort of wall here. Uh, it, it, it declines starting from, from this frontier here. Uh, but what's happening uh, that is interesting is you see that the, the, the bump here I is more pronounced than, than this one, which means that uh, in a boom, workers move faster to uh, the point the, uh, of optimal uh, uh, matching. Okay, sorting, sorting is, uh, is, is stronger, or the, the force towards sorting is stronger in a boom than in a, than in a recession. So, and that's interesting because at the same time, in a boom, you have more mismatch, but the force towards uh, perfect matching is stronger in a, in a boom at the same time. So conclusion, so we have developed a sequential auction model with a heterogeneous workers and tasks and aggregate productivity shocks. The model fits the US time series the data from C51 to 2012 uh, reasonably well and exactly propagates the technology shock to uh, unemployment rates. In booms, workers initially accept worse matches on average than in recessions. And once employed, they move more quickly to better matches in booms than in recessions. What about wages? That's the last slide. Uh, no, the, yeah. So yes, I mean, we haven't used any wages. So the next step is, of course, to go to wage data. So what is the ground? Uh, uh, project. I mean, what is it that we want to do now? We want to take the match employee-employee data over 20 or 30 years uh, and estimate this model on, uh, on, uh, a, uh, uh, on the match employee-employee data so that we can have a model in which you will have wage distributions that depend on worker ability, firm heterogeneity, and uh, the environment, and a model in which each worker faces its own uh, 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 wage uh, trajectory. So the problem is, can, you, can we keep the, recurs the, the recursive structure of the model? I was going to do, like in my uh, 2011 paper, uh, uh, and we would, the, the model would not have been uh, 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 recursive. Jeremy has it, the, this, uh, this great idea. Why not forcing wage contract to be negotiated in, the, in this way? So I, I will leave it to you uh, 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 to think about it. If you, I hope that uh, you, you, you think it's not a crazy idea. That is, what is the idea? The idea is that um, instead of negotiating about a wage, you negotiate about a value. And uh, what you negotiate about, so values. If you negotiate about wages, then you have to worry about wage, uh, how, wh whether the wage is going to remain in the bargaining set after the productivity shock. A simple way out of this is to assume peace rate, set, uh, peace, peace rate wages, like Gadi Barlevi did and uh, like we did in uh, in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a paper with uh, Jesper Bagger, François Fontaine, and uh, Fabien Bostevine. But if you do that, if you still you, the model is not recursive, but you can keep the piece rate idea and the piece rate on the value. So basically what you do is you negotiate on, 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 on sigma. And once sigma has been negotiated, it is fixed forever, and this is the wage that going to, uh, to adjust. And what you get, if you do this, you get this very nice uh, wage, uh, wage, wage equation, and I'm done, this is the last one. The wage corresponding to a particular contract, that's uh, a, a, a weight uh, average of the, the match productivity and home production, minus a discount, and this discount is, is all the greater that you can expect uh, 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 wage uh, uh, renegotiation, uh, better wage renegotiations or contract renegotiations in the future, and we are able to calculate it in a very simple way, in a way that preserves uh, uh, the recursivity uh, of the model. So I think that at this stage we have the model that we wanted, uh, um, which uh, to, to, to bring to the, the, uh, the uh, uh, microdata. Thank you.